Welcome to another Flip Chart Friday. On this episode, we're going to be talking about marketing, specifically marketing on a budget. So if you don't have the revenue to put in things like ads, like Google ads or Facebook ads or God forbid LinkedIn ads, which seem to be five times the price of any other one, then you're going to have to do things organically. You'll notice that I do things organically quite a lot. Um, it's not because I'm cheap. I would just rather put the money into up in the quality of the content rather than putting it into ad spend and then lowering the quality of the content. But let's get started about how you would approach marketing for your business so you get more out of it as you go forward. Sounds a strange thing for a commercial person to say. I've been a commercial director most of my adult life, but don't sell, give value. You should always look to educate, entertain and engage with your audience. So I've noticed that on these videos, we very rarely talk about specific services or things that people can buy. It's much more about the lessons and education. But let me try and give you a little bit of insight into why that works as a strategy. Because you're so focused on value, people perceive that there's a reciprocity thing there, but it also showcases your skill set. So if I'm a subject matter expert in, say, languages, and I start to produce video content around how to approach learning a language, what the sort of like phonetics are, how to learn the taxonomy of a language, the common used phrases, I'm really showing my experience of how I approach learning languages. Now, for every, say, five people that decide they'll do it on their own, there's going to be a few people that get sort of part of the way through that process and either get too busy, too stressed, or decide it's not for them. That just encourages them to reach out to someone. Now, they might not reach out to you, and that's fair enough, but they might look at it and say, see the guy I've been watching talking about languages for the last two years? I think I should just take his course, or I would quite like him to give me some consultancy. So showcasing your experience is never a bad thing. I learned this very early on in my career when I started to give public speaking talks. So when you present to a room, or let's backtrack for that for a minute. If I go as a networker to a meeting, I might be able to meet, say, four or five people at max. And I get a bit of a decent conversation with them, and I generally schedule one-to-ones. But that's almost the maximum of what I can do without compromising on the quality of it. But through things like public speaking, I can actually talk to the entire room. And then everyone in that room gets an experience of that's what John specializes in. So if I make it a non-sales approach and I say, look, if you are naturally interested in marketing, conversion-led design, e-learning, come and speak to me at the end. I love talking about those topics and I'd be more than happy to kind of have a chat with you. See the people that come up at the end of the talk and speak to you. They're your natural fit customers or referral partners anyway. But when I'm actually approaching social media, I'm taking that same principle of public talks and putting it on a medium where I can actually use that. So the way I've always broke down my content is, is it educational? Is there value for the customer? So if I'm not sharing the golden nuggets and I'm almost like keeping them all secret, the perception is that that's given me a head start, a distinct advantage over my competitors. But it doesn't work like that in business. There's no unique ideas. Everything that I know can be learnt from books or talking to other people. There's vastly more experienced people than me out there that you can talk to and really gain that knowledge. It's just about putting in the time. So it's kind of silly in a way for me to hide that educational knowledge, to almost selfishly hold on to it. By sharing it, I attract much more people towards me than if I was sort of hiding it and trying to use it as a competitive advantage. Entertainment. Some people are absolutely hilarious with their videos. Uh, I'm a big fan of Davey Hutton. The way he does his videos, I suppose it's like Marmite for some people. Some people probably watch that and they say, I hate that, that's not my bag. To me, it's hysterical and I think, you know, the guy could be a stand-up comedian. So he's definitely on the entertainment with the way he does it. But he also has bits of entertainment, sorry, education in there as well, where he's talking to you about the subject of what he specialises in, which in his case is real estate. And it's very engaging. So he is encouraging people to talk to him. People will comment, they'll share the post. So he's getting far, far more reach for the content he's putting out, purely because he's looking at it from that lens, making it entertaining for the customer. So when you're approaching your content, I think you should look at it in that lens. Build up a diagram, so like an upside down Y, like this, and work out what camp does it sit in. Does it sit in education, entertainment, or engagement? Now engagement can be different as well. It doesn't always look like creating content. So I speak to a lot of marketeers um, to actually work out the best methods. And they're saying, right, post this frequency, post video, uh, look at podcasts. That's great, and that's all media. 
But engagement can also be as simple as writing meaningful comments on people's posts. So if I come across your content, instead of saying great information or great job, I might say something like, I really like specifically that you did this. Where did you learn X? Was that in a book? Because that's really interesting to me. I've not heard anyone speaking about that. This is kind of like how you are with kids. You know when you give a kid a kind of compliment, you don't just say, good job pal. You say, do you know what I like? I like the way you coloured in the lines, the details. That's what I like about it. It's really cool. I like the way that looks. Watch how they react to that type of comment versus a sort of generic, good job. Okay, what's with staff, what's with kids, what's with clients, what's with social media. Be specific about the feedback you're giving and drive engagement. Try to bring people into conversations, not just making statements that can't really go anywhere. That back and forth actually attracts a lot of eyes. And over the years, I've actually got sales off the back of comments that I've put in other people's posts because I've not approached it as a sale. I've approached it as building out on that topic of what they were speaking about. Planning your endpoint. What is the purpose of your marketing? What are you actually trying to achieve? So I've done it with my business, not to kind of focus on it, but just to try and give you a realistic view of how we would construct our content. So the way I look at it is, what's the end destination? So we do website video audits, and that's a kind of like a low cost, good value return. We do startup packages, we do consultancy and support, and we do custom projects. So in a way, that's like what we're in business to sell. For someone like Apple, it would be iPhones, iMacs, PowerBooks. They've got their own products. You think about what your endpoints are. Where are you trying to drive your traffic towards? Because that's what marketing is all about. So it doesn't make sense for you to put out content on, say, something like languages, which I was saying earlier, if that's not something you sell. So I'm not saying sell languages as a service, but show your subject matter expertise in an area that you actually sell, and it will naturally flow that the person, when they're curious about it, says, I really love these kind of tips that you're sharing, John, but I'd like that done for my business. Well, let me tell you about an audit. Now, I won't do that publicly, but I would do that through a chat or a conversation on the phone I'm always thinking about my endpoints in mind. Naturally, I'm looking at how can I break this into content? So I'm going, what engagement, educational, or entertaining content can I make around audits? And that's helping me generate the ideas. If you think about it, Hybrid Anchor are now producing three videos per week. So the kind of worry would be there of, what if you run out of ideas? What if you run out of topics to talk about on the video? But because I have these endpoints, I will forever have content because I'll always be adding in new services, new pillars, new focus, growing the team, growing the business. And it gives me so much leverage to kind of create future topics that my social media doesn't go stale. It allows me constantly to be talking in and around the areas where I'm focused. So consider what your endpoints are in your business and then build your social media out from that. <coughs> Content types. So there's lots of content. I could have literally filled about 16 pages of this just with the types of content that are out there. But I've summarized a few of the kind of good ones. Blog content really shows a deep expertise in an area and allows you to go into really good detail, sharing stats, citations, book references. It's a brilliant format. It's also great for SEO and it gets you a lot of kind of PR if you're writing the right sort of stuff. Podcasts. We live in a culture where people are very stimulated by audio or visual. You go out for a run, just want to stick on a quick podcast, get a bit of education while you're driving the car. Podcasts are ideal for that. Slides. We can't really do public talking at the moment unless we do it over something like Zoom. But that's not stopping you from making a nice slide deck and speaking to a camera like I'm talking right now. This, in a way, is a slide deck that's been converted into a presentation with a flip chart. But it creates social media and it drives engagement and allows people to kind of interact with what we're talking about. It feels a little bit more intimate than a public talk probably more towards a workshop, but it's one of your options. Images, so you could do something like a carousel, where it's like a couple of images in a row, or a nice graphic, like an infographic or a chart, that really catches the eye. That's your hook to get someone to look at your content. They read the kind of wording, and then you maybe redirect them to your website or a further piece of content. Animation, pretty much explains itself. Could be an explainer video. Uh, it could be just basic animation to catch the eye. Video content, um, I think it's clear that Hybrid Anchor really prioritise video. Uh, that's how we believe the best engagement is built in this market today, because people are so visually stimulated. And then the last one is email. 
you know, sending out emails, getting engagement that way. So that could be a newsletter, it could be a drip course, it could be a cold email. But considering your channels, like what kind of types of content are available to you? And then that will allow you to sort of plan better how you're going to get that content in front of the right audience. Which brings me nicely on to audience and channels. Where do your customers hang out? It doesn't make sense for me to sell my product to the wrong demographic. So for example, if really young people or really old people don't buy what I do, then I don't want to hang about on channels where the audience for that is strong. Now audiences change over time. Things like LinkedIn have always performed well for me because it's a very business centric social media network. It's actually my favorite social media network. Facebook is pretty good but it can kind of lean towards more personalised kind of businesses. Things like trades are fantastic on Facebook. We do an okay number from Facebook, but it's not necessarily the main focus of where we put our kind of wood behind that arrow. TikTok, I laugh about it, but actually it's doing quite a lot of things in the business scenes. There's an upcoming podcast episode that I'm going to be doing with Mark Conley that we're doing Business Builders, where we'll be looking at TikTok for business. Um, I'm quite looking forward to that episode. I think it'll be quite interesting to see how businesses are really leveraging those features to drive traffic and engagement for themselves. Instagram, always a good one. YouTube, if you're doing videos, that's the place to be. Fantastic community for video content creators, course builders, businesses that want to be seen as educators and subject matter experts in their own field. Your website, remember your website's a channel as well. Feeding that blog, making sure you're kind of sharing content on there, there's constant evolution, there's constant changes. That's really key as well. And then Pinterest. So you could do things like infographics. I've actually looked at things like, there's a nice infographic for a process. You click on it, takes you through to a service. There's something I can buy at the other side. There's obviously a lot more social networks than this. Uh, there's ones I've not even went into. There's ones that are for good demographics, maybe in like WeChat for if you're selling into Asia. There might be other ones like upcoming sort of trendy apps. If you're looking for a young, maybe millennial sort of audience or Generation Z, Generation Y, they're going to adopt the new technologies far faster. So it's a good idea to be looking at what's the upcoming, what's the challenger brands. Eventually they're probably going to get acquired by like your Google, Facebook, Apple, all this kind of thing. Um, however, looking at it that way, those kind of challenger brands are a great way to build audience really early and get that kind of value up front. Let's talk about frequency. I was constantly getting staff coming back to me and saying, you don't want to put out too much content, John. It'll get spammy. You'll start saying the same thing. You'll start going, you know, repeating the same topics or you're kind of like re-delivering the same message. It can be too frequent. What I've done here is I've broke down a table. Now you could add in as many channels as you want to do. The two that we are mainly focused on is Facebook and LinkedIn at the moment. It's not to say we won't widen the net, but I think there's a really important lesson in this. Do not commit to more channels than you can possibly maintain consistently. So let's just say that you were going to send out a video on a Monday, okay? And you were going to do a podcast on a Wednesday, and then a video on a Friday, okay? So that's what Hybrid Anchor do. And we do the same on LinkedIn. Now I know that I can hit that consistently. There's not one week that's going to go by where I miss a video or miss a podcast because I plan for it, I know it's there, it's in the schedule and I build it way in advance. But some people are all over the place when it comes to social media. They're posting things at 6 p.m. at night, they're going three weeks without posting anything, then they go through five days where for some reason they've just got the social media craze, they posted loads of stuff and then they go quiet again for like a year. You need to have consistency. Think about it like a TV show. Everybody used to run home and watch their TV show or Game of Thrones is airing on a certain day and we all almost watch it together, it becomes a cultural thing. Um, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people's content, they'd be absolutely delighted if people were running home to watch their content. But it is important that you set a consistency. So if I say something like Business Builder Mondays, it's important that that goes out on a Monday and it's there. Let's say I miss that for two or three weeks in a row. Eventually I'll start to get messages from people that have been following saying, are you not doing Business Builder Mondays anymore, John? And then that's bad, isn't it? So it's like, there's an audience that maybe not engaged, potentially not commented, but they're now noticing that this content is missing. It's a good way to test actually are people finding value in what you do, but it's much better to actually plan it in. 
The reason why I put 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. here is to actually look at if you were doing two posts per day, that's probably what you would want to do is where are the spikes? So you might find for something like LinkedIn, actually it's 11. And you'll know this by looking at the analytics. So when you test with your content, look at what actual topics generate engagement. What time of day do you get the most engagement? Something as simple as the Scotland versus Czech Republic game the other night there in UEFA could be enough to actually clash into your content. So you need to be aware of what's the upcoming events and also when are you going to release your content. Having these sort of two time slots is when I like to do it and this allows me to plan in. So I've got all this in my calendar and I can look for where my gaps are. So if I have something like a testimonial video, I could say, do you know what, I'll put that on Tuesday afternoon or there's a different type of content here. It's not really ideal for Facebook. It's LinkedIn centric. So I'll do that on the Thursday afternoon and it allows me to plan in my content in advance. So the big lesson in that is plan for your value, but only commit to something you can consistently do. If it's all scattergun, then that's going to be the results you get also. It's inconsistent. You're going to get inconsistent results. So what are the takeaways? You'll have heard me saying it, and I'll be saying it until I'm blue in the face. Do not sell. Educate, entertain, and engage. Know your destination. Where are you trying to drive this traffic to? Even if you're not mentioning it on the episodes or mentioning it on your social media, knowing where it is means that when people come off the back of it, you've got somewhere for that traffic to go. Where are you taking that conversation? Think about your content types. Keep it dynamic. Don't just do the same thing. So even though I'm doing videos three times a week, they're different. There's talking head videos on one, there's a two-person podcast in the middle, and there's flip charts on a Friday. Very different content, even though it's all video. So even within that one medium, I've diversified it into three different types of content to extract different types of value. Customers, where are they? Where are they hanging about? So if your customers are down the pub, that's where you need to be. If your customers are out in parks, that's where you need to be. Marketing is all about getting around the right audience and driving them into your business. So learn where your customers hang out and then start to market into those channels. Make sure you select a frequency you can stick to. So whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, doesn't matter. What's important is it's consistent, it's at a brand quality that you're happy with and it's going to happen all the time. Thanks very much for your time there, guys, with the Flip Chart Fridays. I hope you're finding good value from these kind of sessions. As always, I would encourage you to leave feedback. Feedback's a gift. I don't just want a kind of great job, doing good. Tell me topics. What would you like me to cover? We can talk about all number of things on these episodes. I want you to kind of seize that opportunity and ask questions so we can plan content about what you find valuable. As always, have a good time, and I'll catch you next week.